So some of you have been following me long enough to know that I've used the analogy of grapes and watermelons many times when it comes to sync licensing and more specifically, your royalties and sync fees and all the income you can earn. Why I use that analogy is because some producers who hear that working with production music libraries generally requires you to become 50-50 partners with them, meaning that you're going to give them 50% of your sync fees generally, and you're going to certainly offer 50% of the royalties to them. They're gonna keep 50% of those in terms of the publisher share, and you're gonna keep the remaining 50% as the writer. Some producers hear that and they run away from this industry faster than anything, and I respect that, totally understand it. It's not for everybody. And for those of you that are, have been sticking around and you're still interested in this industry and you're still pursuing it maybe seriously or you know dabbling in it, I think some of you have had ears to hear that sometimes giving up 50% to the right people, to the right partner, can actually turn out to be a much better play for you in the long run, meaning that 50% of a watermelon is much bigger and much more fulfilling and nourishing than 100% of a grape. And this is an example right here from my recent BMI royalties that'll actually demonstrate this actually for you in a very powerful way. So you don't wanna miss this one, okay? So what you'll see is on the left side is I have a couple of cues that were placed on the Judge Judy program. I've been getting placements with Judge Judy for 10 years now. Actually, in all of my royalty statements, there's a Judge Judy section. It's kind of funny. So Judge Judy and I go back a ways. But as you might notice, there are two different cues with two different names. And the reason for that is because I actually had two different publishers independently both get me placements on Judge Judy. It actually might happen in your career. It's not the most uncommon thing that ever happens. So you notice one's just called Judge Judy Q. I didn't name it that. They just, for whatever reason, felt that was right. And I definitely didn't name this one either. WCP 14, blah, 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 blah. Didn't do any of that. Okay. So two different placements. Obviously, you see one had 15 plays, one had 97. So one of them obviously aired a lot more. Uh, the duration, one was 15, one was 12 seconds. You know, more or less about the same. So not much different there. Both background instrumental. So not really much change there. Okay. Mostly is you'll see that there's just a difference in terms of how many times the thing aired uh, over and over again. Okay. What I really want you to pay attention to is over here on the right side where you see the percentages. Okay. You can't see what this column is indicating, but this on your BMI royalty statement will say uh, ownership share, which does not mean total ownership of the royalties, but it means the, especially since this is my writer statement, this is the ownership of the writer share of the royalties, okay? This might get a little confusing and convoluted, so try to stay with me. So when you see something that says 100%, like this one, that doesn't mean that I own the publishing as well. It doesn't mean 100% of all the royalties, meaning I got publishing and I got writers. That's not what that means. That means I have 100% of the writer share, which is, if you zoom out for the total royalties, only 50% of the total picture, right? Because the other 50%, or you could call 100% of the publisher share is on the library side, 100% of the writer share is on my side, the composer side. Hopefully that's clear. I know it gets a little confusing when these percentages get swapped back and forth, but just remember that. This basically means that the deal that I struck with this in particular uh, publisher um, allowed me to keep 100% of my writer share. Awesome, really cool, love that. Usually I feel that that's the best way to go. Now you'll notice though, whoa, this next one, even the one be below it and above it, um, I only had 50% um, writer share, meaning that of the total royalties earned for this queue, I'm actually only earning 25% of the total income, right? 25% to me, 25% to another composer that I basically split my writer share with for this opportunity. And I'll explain to you why and show you very quickly why I'm very glad that I did that. I know some people will never do that. I'll show you why collaborating, especially in the right place, the right time with the right opportunities can really pay off for you. Uh, I decided to basically collaborate. So that person got the other 50% of the writer share and then the library has the remaining uh, royalty share, okay? But if you calculate all the total income from this queue, I'm only getting 25% of it. I'm getting a minority, actually. I'm getting 20, you know, one fourth essentially of the income. So some people see and hear about a percentage and go, that's not fair, Jesse. You should not be doing that. You should have never sub submitted that. You should have never sacrificed that. That person's ripping you off, blah, 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 blah. Because on the surface, it looks bad. It definitely looks bad. Here's where the shocker comes in. And here's where you're going to see the magic of watermelons versus grapes, okay? So we're gonna look at how much these cues actually earn me. And as you can see, I indicated them as the top one is a great uh, bottom one as the watermelon. So I own 100% of this one and I only got 50% of that watermelon. But look at what we earned here. We'll go all the way to the other side there. I guess you could see it right there anyways. But for my grape, my measly little grape that I own all of it, hooray, I own it all, 11 bucks. 
Never going to complain about royalties. I'm not complaining about that at all. I'll take 11 bucks every day, all day, especially on a really long royalty statement. $11 adds up <laughs> after you know many of those piling up, okay? But look at my watermelon. Look at the thing that I took a big hit on, you know, that I really sacrificed my writer share for because of all those placements, right? 97 times it aired uh, over and over and over again, uh, even though I had a lower uh, length of, of time of placement, only 12 seconds. That's like a 16x uh, increase in the royalties that I received. Yes, the other composer, he also earned $179. And if you double $179, that's what the library earns. The library earned more than both of us. Um, obviously, and then the writer, the other co-writer and I, uh, you know, each got 179 bucks. I'll take this any day, all day, when I'm sleeping, when I'm awake. This is totally A-OK -okay with me. This is why we have to think about these things in a little bit more granular detail and not be so, for me, my argument is don't be so black and white. Um, with all of that being said, when you are first getting accepted into a library, I don't believe the library should be taking any percentage of your writer share unless you are co-writing with another composer or producer that is really equally giving value to your track. I have heard of some libraries that are saying, hey, we're going to mix and master your track for you. We're going to take 50% of your writer share for the privilege. I'm not a fan of that. And not many of them have done that. Literally, I think one, maybe two in the history of my career have heard of doing that. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's something you should be doing. Um, you can learn how to mix and master your tracks. You don't need to be giving up 50% of your income for somebody that's just literally putting polish on it. Creatively adding to it, I think that's a different subject. And I think especially if somebody is creative, creatively ad adding to your music to elevate the production quality, to help you guys get more placements and more prominent placements, absolutely. Cut people in on that. Find a way to make it 50-50 and fair, especially if you want to have a long-term, healthy working relationship with another composer, producer, or vocalist, okay? The exception to the rule would be, let's say you're working with a library, and this has happened in my career, and this is how opportunities like this do pop up in my career. I'm already working with somebody, and I'm generally keeping 100% of my writers, but an opportunity pops up where they can get pretty much guaranteed placements with a particular client, but either they have to cut into your uh, composer or writer share, or they need to partner you with a composer or writer or an, uh, an artist or a vocalist because they know that somebody can help deliver the goods. They know that partnering two people up can really help deliver the goods. And that's just sort of the take it or leave it offer. It's like, if you want these, pr if you want free money, basically just sitting on the ground, we can get all these guaranteed placements, which you can air over and over and over again we're gonna to have to cut into the writer share. So this is where for me, I have learned to become much more flexible, especially when it's literally almost as close to guaranteed placements as you can possibly get for those opportunities. And it's a sort of take it or leave it, you know, take 50% of the watermelon or keep, you can say no, keep 100% of your grape. I usually take 50% of the watermelon for these and this exact reason, because I've seen how that mindset of flexibility can actually pay off in larger royalties for myself. Again, just getting your music into a catalog on day one, that's not guaranteed of, that doesn't have extremely high guarantee of placements. You guys know that. Just getting into a catalog is great. It's a first good start, but that's not the same as somebody going, hey, I've got an in with an editor who's working on the next season of this reality show. And if we can strike this deal, they will literally just use the music, like the 50 cues or 100 cues that we can crank out in the next couple of months. They will only use our music for their, their show the entire season. Those are kind of those home run opportunities that when you see them, I'm just encouraging you guys to be very, very open-minded and flexible and remember this video and remember that just because you're taking a 50% cut doesn't mean you're taking a 50% dip in your income, as you can see. So let me know your thoughts on this. Is this helpful? Is this, illusion, is this um, illuminating to you? Is this kind of helping you see a little bit behind the curtain as to why uh, this is really helpful? And of course, yes, you see that, you know, I still get my two cent placements. I still get my seven cent placements. So be prepared for that. You're going to get disappointed on your royalty statements. There are still plenty of placements that are almost not worth printing them on the ink uh, or the digital <laughs> uh, printouts that they do. But again, uh, this is a numbers game. You have to have to stack up as many placements as you possibly can to get those that income to kind of rise up to the point where hopefully it can start to sustain you. And that's really what I'm trying to coach you and, and advise you guys to get to.